Tottenham will bounce back from their summer break and into the new season with the confidence of a side who reached the Champions League final. That fantastic achievement happened despite not making a single signing. A fourth-place league finish is something for the North London side to build on, especially now they have the stability of their new stadium and are finally making some signings during this current transfer window. Maurizio Pochettino must surely have the confidence of all at the club, but what should Tottenham do next to progress? We've spoken to fans and journalists, the people close to the club, to get their view. Let us know yours in the comments below. What Spurs should do next really is try and uh, a challenge for trophies. I feel like right now the players deserve a trophy and I think we need to just bring in some more players to be able to actually challenge for um, things like the FA Cup, um, the league, maybe even the Champions League again. So there's definitely a sense that reaching the Champions League final was was the summit for Spurs and I think that's already sort of been reflected in, in some of the some of the decisions, some of the comments that have come out this summer. So if you look at Christian Eriksen um, saying that he, he could maybe do with a, with a new challenge and, and you can see where he's coming um, in, in that respect because in some ways it does feel like Spurs have come to a natural closing of the chapter almost. I think they need to improve in the fullback areas because I don't necessarily think that they've, they've got that right yet. And as ever with Spurs, the problem is how do you keep players happy who are not necessarily going to start? And I think that's the issue we've seen with Fernando Llorente, who, who's come in and done a good job uh, towards the end of the season when Kane got injured. I think there are definitely some areas we overachieved um, and a lot of expectations were set very highly for us. Um, there are a lot of places, obviously, we haven't still achieved um, some of our goals and targets, but overall, I do agree. I think it was an amazing season. Uh, as you said, our squad is quite thin. Our first 11 is amazing, and when everyone's fit, um, then we're really, really good. There's a few areas that need, that need kind of readjusting. Our, our right back situation isn't great. Um, Trippier has been very out of form this year, despite a great World Cup and a great uh, season last year. Um, so I think we could do with a better right back. So I think a probably a target for us would be Max Ahrens for, for Norwich. Um, I've heard we've been linked with him. I think he's a great, another great young talent that kind of got under the radar amongst a lot of clubs. He was in the championship team of the season, got the young player of the season for the championship as well. So I think he's definitely a kind of a, a young talent that we can approach and definitely secure for that right back spot. If Christian Eriksen does leave, then that's going to leave a, a creative hole in, in the Spurs team and, and they've been linked with uh, Real Betis uh, midfielder Giovanni Lo Celso, who I think completed 63 uh, take-ons in the Liga last season, which is more than any other Betis player. And that tells you the kind of the kind of presence that he could bring to Spurs and it's probably something they've been lacking in midfield, someone who can take the ball and really drive forward into that final third. They've got a lot of, a lot of talent uh, in, in midfield, but probably not someone who, who can really get on the ball and, and, and drive at, at, at opponents. We'd like to see some, some new and exciting players come in and really help us trying to achieve uh, more of our goals this year. The likes of Arsenal might sign players. I mean, City, Liverpool, they definitely will. And United are looking to improve on their side. So if we fall behind on transfers, then I, I think a lot of people will catch us out. It looks like potentially both of the fullbacks uh, could be on their way, Kieran Trippier and Danny Rose. Kieran Trippier, who what a season he had. He went from being England's hero in the World Cup semi-final to being accused of being a fraud by the Spurs fans. Such was the drop-off in, in his form. Um, he's been linked quite surprisingly, really, with, with a move to Juventus or, or Napoli. Um, and then if he was to go, then Serge Aurier would be the only option there. So Spurs could potentially need another right-back as well. And then the same goes for, for the left-hand side. Uh, Danny Rose has sort of uh, suggested that he could be on his way. He, he's never shy about speaking to the media. Uh, is Danny? He, he, he always s says it how it is. O o almost the same as Ericsson. You can you can see why some of these Spurs players are feeling that getting to the Champions League represents the pinnacle. That's that's as, as, as far as they can go with Spurs. What what is the next step for them? It's it, it's so difficult to take take that next one when you look at the teams who they're competing with, which is. Man City and Liverpool, I, I wouldn't say that um, Spurs are going to be able to challenge for the title next season. But on the flip side, with so many of their other rivals uh, in a state of flux, in, in a state of rebuild, uh, the likes of Man United, uh, Chelsea and Arsenal, especially Arsenal, um, Spurs have, if you, if you look at it on the flip side, Spurs have got a, a massive opportunity to stamp their authority and 
claim third third place for their own and sort of um, lay the foundations for a potential title title challenge. And Dombele, he's obviously a massive uh, bonus. We needed to replace, uh, we needed a good midfield because obviously Dombele left. His circle stepped up really nicely this season, but um, unfortunately Wanyama hasn't been back to his best. Uh, I think he's suffered a lot with his injuries and he's just not been looking good. So we need someone to hold that midfield role and just be a midfield general. With Pochettino implementing what he did with the whole um, philosophy of it, we can't just sign anyone because it has to fit in with that, has to fit in with the squad, they have to have a good work ethic. So um, it's never been easy, but hopefully this season we can buy and attract new players. I think Tottenham's run the right way. You've seen a lot of clubs now nowadays have brought in a lot of money from, from obviously very rich owners, but you can tell that Daniel Levy is just treating Spurs um, very cautiously and making sure that we can bring in that revenue and also be able to spend in the right ways. And I think if we, the way he's doing it, I think is amazing. He's managed to get great deals. And not only that, he's managed to secure an unbelievable manager in Pochettino and his coaching staff. I think they've done an absolutely incredible job. Daniel Levy's invested in the right things like the new stadium, like the training ground and being able to secure um, a great coaching, coaching team to be able to develop the young players, which is what we like to see. A lot of, a lot of big key, like a lot of big clubs are now kind of moving towards the youth. Um, and I feel like we were one of the first teams to really do that by bringing in players like Harry Kane, Harry Winks, signing Deli Ali from Young and bringing him up. Um, I think we're, we're running it in the right way, but I feel like now is a good time to start um, investing just that little bit more into the players. If Daniel Levy isn't going to back Pochettino after he's led the club to the Champions League final and into the new stadium, then when is he going to back him? Pochettino deserves to be backed and lay down a statement of intent that the Champions League final wasn't the end game. It wasn't the end goal. They can go one better. I think Tottenham Hotspur res respect like their fans a lot. Um, you've seen what they've done to the community. I mean, we couldn't even really build this stadium without developing Tottenham as a whole. And it's, it's easy enough to be able to just move to a completely new site where it might be cheaper to build a new stadium and et cetera, et cetera. But we, we wanted, I think they wanted to keep it home and make sure that the fans felt like the new home was the same as the old White Hart Lane. I feel like I am respected. Um, I feel like obviously the way things were handled communication wise with the stadium wasn't the best, but in the end of the day, they did deliver on the promise of an amazing stadium. So that part of it is great. Um, I feel like we are respected, we are listened to mostly, as much as you can be. It's hard for me to compare because I go to a lot of ladies games and the atmosphere there is very different to a men's environment. So um, if I were to compare it to that, then I'd say obviously there's like almost to no respect, but it's a very different feeling. So I think if I just compare it to general men's games, and especially if I would compare it to our North London um, rivals, then we have a lot better um, like communication with the club. A lot of fans were frustrated with Levy for the stadium being delayed by half a year um, and all kind of these like false promises of um, of being able to move into the new ground but they did manage to freeze the, the season ticket prices for the coming season which I think was a, a definitely a good choice because I don't think fans would be, be too happy if they increased the price um, after the delay. Spurs have really progressed in the in the last few years in that traditionally they've been outside of, of the main clubs in the Premier League whereas now they are a certified member of the top four and the club has taken that in their stride really well. There's definitely really strong bond between Pochettino and the fans and then the players as well. Um, you look back to the season when uh, Hung Min Son scored a, a late, late goal at Watford and he ran to the fans and the, the, the photos there of him, him celebrating amongst the fans sort of personified just how close uh, the unity was between the fans and, and, and the players. Um, I think a little bit of that feel-good factor went when the moves got delayed and then got delayed and then got delayed. But it's, it's been interesting to see just how quickly the feel-good factor has come back by being in that new stadium. The fans absolutely love it. It's a magnificent stadium. I've been, it's, it's one of the best in the world. No, absolute no question about it. But it cost over a billion quid. And that means it's got to be paid back. Pochettino's a football manager. He wants the best players. He's got to the Champions League final. They just, just got into the Champions League next season through their league position. He won't want that position or to be in that position again. Daniel Levy has a very delicate balance to, to tread. And unless he gets that right, he risks 
unsettling squad and he risks losing Pochettino and I think it is almost a more important sum of this one for Tottenham than the last one. The same way that people talk about potentially playing at Old Trafford or Stamford Bridge, the, 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 the best grounds in, in the league, Spurs now have the best ground in the league. So it's, 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 an, it's another tool that for, for Pochettino to, to sway players to, to come to North London, the, the, the white side of North London. We've got that with our fantastic training facilities as well. So we've definitely got the system in the back in place. So it's great that we've got play, places where the players can train. Obviously, we've always had international teams coming there. We've had the Brazil men's team there ahead of the World Cup. The ladies, um, women, uh, the USA women's team trained there before their current World Cup. So it's definitely a facility that we should be proud of. And the same with our stadium. I mean, I am slightly biased, but I do really like it. I think it's amazing and the acoustics are insane. And I've heard people who are less inclined towards Spurs who also said really good things about it. So it's nice to have those facilities. He's, he's very, very, uh, very clever in the media, Pochettino. He says all the right things. He doesn't sort of commit too much, um, uh, d doesn't, doesn't give too much away. I think that he really is still the, the key man at Spurs. He's the glue that, that's going to hold, hold it all together. It's, it's on him to, if, if there are players who, who are thinking the chapter has closed, it's, up to, it's, it's on him to, to, to convince them that there is still another step that they can take. Overall, I am incredibly happy and it's a great time to be a Spurs fan. I do love what Pochettino's implemented. I think the way we play football is, is brilliant. The positive attitude, the, the work I think is amazing. And I do love the games day in, day out. And I wouldn't trade that just to get a trophy and then just not do anything um, on a weekly basis. But we do need to somehow solidify all this progress with a trophy. Um, whether that would have been the Champions League trophy, it would have been amazing. But any kind of trophy this year because I think it would really build a team together because it's I think you could see the way they celebrated getting to that final how much it meant to them so having that bond is something that is so unique and it will keep them going and knowing that they've already achieved it would be a massive bonus so yeah I think that's definitely what would be nice for Spurs. So that's what those contributors think thanks to them for taking part. Let us know your views in the comments below. What should Tottenham do next?